We've heard a lot from Aston Martin Lagonda over the last couple of years, particularly at Geneva Motor Shows, about an electrified future. But that's mostly been in the shape of the concepts, the Lagonda concepts. Now, however, we've got something more concrete, or aluminium and carbon fibre, the Rapide E. This is not a concept, but rather a proper working production car, complete with a full carbon fibre battery case and technology developed with Williams Advanced Engineering. And here to talk us through the car is its vehicle line director, John Caress. John, thank you very much indeed for joining us here. This is, this is your baby, so you must be pretty excited to see it. Let's start with the looks, because to the casual observer, it looks sort of just like another repeat in some respects, until you start going into the details. Perhaps one of the most obvious things is the wheels. Talk us through those. Yes, they're very different. The product's about efficiencies in terms of how we're utilising the electric drivetrain within a very beautiful body. And we've made those subtle changes to the car. The wheel is one of them, and it's driven by aerodynamics. So reducing the uh, aerodynamic drag of the car is really important to reduce range. And also, it's very lightweight, feature forged, aluminium, beautifully diamond turned. Gives us the aesthetic, but also gives us the uh, efficiencies that we need. So how much more efficient is this shape than a, than a standard? We're about 8% better in terms of aero efficiency. Which is a pretty um, big gain for... Yeah, absolutely. And again, all these tiny little sums all add up to a big improvement. And of course, with electric cars, it is all about efficiency. Absolutely. So should we walk down yeah, sort yeah. of around the front and have a look at the, what you've done around here first? Yeah, so one of the, one of the other changes that we've done is the uh, front uh, splitter area. You can see these perforations. Again, we have a, a design aesthetic in there. Mm -hmm. But again, increasing the uh, aero efficiency of the vehicle but also giving us a style differentiation as well, which we wanted to do with the car. So actually make them purposeful as, uh, as well as looking beautiful. Yeah, certainly. Moving down along the car, we've also got the nice little badge there on the haunches, which is a new branding. Absolutely, for... and it's the only badge that it wears other than the wings. Uh, again, very discreet, understated, but displaying that. It's a very different model to what we've done before, and it's the first. Yes. Uh, it's first yeah. luxury electric vehicle but also the first electric Aston Martin. One thing I think it's worth just kind of Im imagining because you look at the car and I still can't quite, quite get out of my head the fact that there must be a V12 under that bonnet so what is you know under the length of the car if, as we walk along it? What we've basically done is taken out the V12, we've taken out the torque tube that's in the centre of the car, mm -hmm. we've taken out the 8-speed transmission that's <laughs> in the car and we've taken out the differential of the car. <laughs> Until it's just and a husk. Until we've, we're left with the base structure of the car. We've obviously had to uh, replace that with something. So we have the, the 65 kilowatt hour primary pack, which takes up roughly about half the engine base. So imagine like a V8 would be there, mm -hmm. that kind of size, all the way down the centre tunnel. To, and that is mated to a uh, single speed transmission, bespoke. Okay. So how much more does this weigh? Because that's always a big question. With In the region of about 100 kilograms more than a repeat AMR. But the car's also 800 volt electrical architecture. Why that's important for us is uh, it will give us more efficiency in terms of charge times. And that, that speed of charge while you're stopping at a service station or if you're going for a meal, for instance, it gives you the convenience straight away. And that 800 volt architecture gives us that. It also allows us to reduce the mass of the battery pack itself and makes it more efficient. Absolutely. So what are we looking at in terms of uh, charge times? So we're looking at a charge of about half an hour. You can charge on an 800 volt uh, charge network and also a 400 volt. Uh, we've got an onboard charger uh, as well, 22 kilowatt again. Uh, very efficient, very quick. From a drivetrain point of view, we've got two inter integral powertrain motors on the car, rear mounted. Uh, with over 950 newton meters just going through the just going wheels. through the rear wheels so just it's the tires <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna quite a lot to cope with then. Yeah. <laughs> i mean thinking about the efficiency as well with the tire so this is a bespoke tire for us by pirelli again lowering the frictional coefficient is really important as well to range and they've been really really supportive of that and these tiny little marginal gains gives us those few more miles has it affected the weight balance of the car too much N not at all. So if anything, we're a little bit more rear biased, but we're, we're around the 50-50 uh, where the base car is. Where we're seeing electrification and this drivetrain is it, it, it's turning an AMR up to 11 in terms of adding more performance feel to the car, which an electric drivetrain with 
more than 950 newton meters really really gives us. Have you got any kind of performance figures you can tell us about it? Sub 4 seconds 0 to 60, 155 miles an hour but it's the performance feel that's the really really um, interesting attribute and byproduct that the drivetrain gives us so 50 to 70 miles an hour one and a half seconds ish so <laughs> not quite far off DBS uh, super legera levels and yeah. it's that real world performance feel but also repeatable performance yeah. so, you know the traffic light Grand Prix as it's sometimes called but we want our customers to still not be constrained by having an electric car. We want that performance there all the time for them. And that presumably a lot of that comes down to uh, cooling. Because the shape is very recognisable, mm, but it's designed mm. for um, an internal combustion engine, yeah. have you managed to yeah. integrate the cooling? Uh, yes, yes. So the front grille, for instance, so that's nice partially big, anyway. blank. It, it, it's big anyway, but we don't need all that air going through. So I can't remember the percentage that is blanked off, but again, that gives us an aero benefit but we're only using the air ratio that we need for the systems on the car. Range is obviously a big thing to talk about with yeah. electric vehicles. Yeah, what, what are we? So we're looking at 200 miles uh, on the WLTP cycle. Did you do it on the previous cycle? We did it on the previous cycle might. as well, so that's about 230 right. miles on the NEDC cycle. We're in this calibration phase of the project. Again, we'll be pushing the engineering team to, to eke out those extra few miles and uh, tenths of miles as we're going through the project. Who's making So X-Track. Ah, right, okay. So again, the, the car has a flavour of motorsport type suppliers who, who want to make that jump from the, the track to the road. We've been very selective. So the motor, for instance, the twin motors that we've got, they're supplied by integral powertrain. It's derived from the motor that's in the Valkyrie car. So the, the car has a lot of uh, very bespoke, very unique parts, uh, very high performance parts as well. So we're getting that lightweight, but also the technology story in the car. So the regenerative braking is, um, again, we want to keep the customer uh, experience uh, not akin to a ICE car, a V12 car, but we want it to not be so far removed like one pedal throttle is. Sure. What's important to, to the electric vehicle owners of the future for Lagonda? We're on that journey, absolutely. Something we can't see from here, but you notice at the rear when it comes out is the huge diffuser. Yes. Um, we were talking earlier about yeah. some big, big old piece of carbon fibre. Absolutely. It runs the whole um, length underneath where the exhaust muffler would be. <laughs> and of course, uh, the new motor and transmission that we've got under the car. Again, those aero gains give us uh, those extra few miles. Again, um, we've been pushing the engineering team very, very hard to just take out those tiny little clicks of counts gives us those more miles that we need. It's interesting, one is, I'm obviously still getting used to EVs and sort of all the different things, but it's interesting seeing all these aero gains that we thought we were seeing a lot of aero gains over the last sort of decade, I suppose, because it's been a big advantage. We see that with particularly, I suppose, the, um, the end game of that is uh, the, the, the Red Bull um, Aston Martin Valkyrie. This is answering the question about efficiency from a range. What Valkyrie is answering its efficiency question for is aerodynamic and downforce. The design team have been at both ends here about <laughs> range versus absolute performance, but this car is about performance from a range perspective as well. Inside the car, pretty much as we'd expect, except for in the dash. Yes, so the car's got a bespoke 10 inch LCD screen, bespoke design, bespoke graphics, again, we're having to ask ourselves different questions about well, what do we display for an electric car? There's no tachometer, so to speak, but what information do our customers actually want? And we've been taking feedback from customers. Uh, well, what's important to them in terms of how do we convey this language of electric cars? Like you said earlier, Henry, is it's a very different world. And it's worth saying that there are only going to be 155 of these produced. Yeah, 155, right. yes. And a lot of what we're looking at here, a lot of what it's been about for you, because you, you worked on sort of very early. I was, first. I was the program manager for the original repeat. So that's yes. pretty extraordinary to see this car go from a completely sort of yeah, so it's whole life. car all the way through to, yeah. to. But what it's doing, whilst it's rounding off repeat, it's much more looking towards the Gonda and saying that this is you know, all this stuff you have to learn yeah. about somewhere, don't you? You yeah. can't just put Abs it all into... Abs absolutely. And th even though this, this is the car of, at the end of its life, the byproduct of all this learning that we're doing is a very beautiful, exciting, very limited edition special vehicle, which the whole team are really, really proud of. And it's a pioneer in 
Aston Martin basically in terms of the processes, the skills, the people, all the things that you kind of take for granted when you're designing a petrol engine car. The end game is Lagonda and this is proving to be a, a very worthwhile exercise for Aston Martin to, to pioneer and forge that way ahead so we're prepared. Absolutely. John, thank you very much indeed. I looked forward to seeing, seeing one out on the road and, thank you very and hopefully much. driving one at some point as well. Yes. That might talk those rear wheels. It yeah. should be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there we are. The Rapide E is intriguing. It's like worlds colliding with its blend of future and past. And it's curious trying to imagine this familiar and slightly old school Aston Martin shape without a V12 soundtrack. However, they might have just created the most beautiful electric car to date. But in some ways, what is really interesting is that it has been created at all. It would have been easy enough for Aston to develop all its electric technology behind closed doors. After all, there are enough distractions at the moment with things like Valkyrie that I don't think anyone would have batted an eyelid if the company hadn't produced an EV before the first Lagonda is due in 2022. Perhaps then they have released this for sale at, you'll have noticed, a so far undisclosed price, simply because they are so pleased with it that they just couldn't resist teasing what they feel they're capable of. No doubt we'll find out if and when we get to drive it. <laughs>